Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we're always finding, learning, playing one more turning of the great strategy games, and today we continue with War Plan Pacific. Now, I'm going to try to play this as much as I can today. Uh, this game releases tomorrow on the Matrix website. That would be Thursday, April 29th of the year, 2021. And so uh, if you're liking this, if it looks like something that interests you, go check that out on Matrix. Uh, I really like the game so far. Now, we haven't progressed enough to know, you know, does the AI uh, maybe not perform as well later on? Right now, it's doing a very good job. But of course, the first few turns are going to be uh, heavily scripted, and so it should do a good job. Uh, where the rubber meets the road is later on. Now, where are we in our game? Well, it's now January 4th, 1942. That means we're in turn three. As you can see, there is snow in the, well, whatever this is. <laughs> this could be the Rocky Mountains, I guess. Uh, it says East Coast over here, but obviously uh, this is the entire United States. Well, that's how Pacific War Games have to be. You have to kind of, uh, you know, represent the United States. You could have the big old United States here, it would make the map uh, unwieldy. Let's put it that way. Uh, and so it's it's snowing here. You can see heavy rain, which are the two raindrops out here. And heavy rain has even more dastardly effects to our air and, and uh, land units. Now, we're on the defensive most places, so I say dastardly. It's actually probably an advantage to us for it to be raining very hard right now on certain parts of the map. And we'll, you know, when we get into other parts of the map, we'll look at it, see how it's affecting things. Now, it was very exciting. We did have two carriers that launched uh, this turn. Now, how did that all work? Well, we went to the deployment screen which is essentially our building queue. And the U.S. had a lot of stuff that dropped. Now, it's no longer here because I've already deployed it. But the way it works is you go up here, uh, you see that it's it'll say ready on the turn that it's ready. And then you uh, go, you click on that, you say deploy, and then you get green you know, the hexes light up green where you can replace that. Now, with the United States, of course, early in the war, the only place we're really going to, or the only couple of places we're really ever going to deploy ships uh, is at L.A. or San Diego. I mean, that's basically where they come out. I guess maybe it could pop out at San Francisco, but these were the main places where ships were launched uh, for the United States. And so we got the champagne out. We busted it over, you know, the hole, and now we're ready to set sail. They put it in the water. Uh, everybody's waving from the pier, and off we go. So let's start here. And we'll get these uh, kind of moved around where we want them. Now, we also, so it wasn't just the two carriers. There was also a destroyer group, I believe, US 17th. No, this is the one we brought in for more fuel. So it's, uh, I say more fuel. Well, it's really more supply is what it came to get. Um, the U.S. has a nice uh, little nice little stockpile of oil, I guess, 23. Nah, it's not that great, <laughs> actually. I, was, uh, I said, not, you know, I just started talking there. I was like, ah, oh, nice little. No, it's not. That's not enough. We need more oil. Now, U.S. oil production will ramp up naturally over time uh, until you probably just have a flood of the black gold. Uh, but right now, we really don't. Uh, but the Colorado did launch. This uh, is one of our new ships. Now, it's a battleship division. I say a ship. It's a group of ships. And uh, again, I have to keep correcting myself on that. After years of playing War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, this is a group of ships. And let's look at its stats. Very nice on the surface. A 10. Uh, very good. It's got a 4 of 4 strength, okay? This is considered a warship 1942, so it is progressed as far as we could have prog progressed here down our advancement tree. So that has given it a new, another strength. Uh, the experience actually comes off with a 60%, so uh, it's not 50 like a lot of the stock units that uh, up here uh, show up with 50 experience. Here we've got 60 uh, okay, this is, you know, effectiveness, operation. Generally, we're always going to have two operation points. But it's a 10 on the surface. It does have some anti-sub capability. Uh, pretty decent anti-air, a 4. That's one of the better we've seen so far. 
It's excellent on the defense uh, range, oil use, okay, one and one. Got it. So it's got to be within one hex of another surface unit to attack it. Uh, but that oil use is the big thing because the U.S. just eh, doesn't have a lot of oil floating around. Uh, that That's maybe a good thing if we're talking about oil spills. But for this game, not so much. Let's go to L.A. I, I don't know if we're going to move that just because of the oil issue. We may just leave it here for a little bit. Um, now, the carriers are probably a different you know, story altogether. So we've got the Yorktown, the Saratoga. We've got this destroyer squad that also floated out here this uh, this turn. And let's see what this destroyer squad's all about. It's a Warships 42 again. Uh, strength, three of three. Experience, okay, so these are showing up with 60% experience. It does have that five anti-sub, five surface, uh, three anti-air. So, you know, fairly well-rounded here. And we'll keep this with the carriers. Uh, and give it a little, you know, give them a little more anti-sub, because as you see, the carrier groups have a two. Well, that's not going to cut it, folks. Uh, but air combat, five. Naval air, a ten. So that's fantastic. We'll go try to bomb a bunch of other ships with that bad boy. Uh, this is carrier operations, 42. That was the Saratoga. Let's make sure the Yorktown. Yeah, these are identical units, it looks like. Both carrier operations, 42. Okay, well, let's take this task force out. Let's sail it out. All right, boys. And let's go to Pearl Harbor with it. Now, we can't make it with one operation point. As you can see, the rain slackens as we get to Hawaii out here. But there's one operation point. And there's two operation points. So now we've got four uh, carriers sitting here at Pearl. Now, the way this game works is if you're sitting at port with a ship, you cannot attack with it, but you can defend. And so, you know, unlike some maybe some other games, uh, don't worry. You know, you're sitting in port doesn't mean you're defenseless or you won't do anything. Uh, ultimately, they're going to sit here and if they get attacked, which... Gosh, I hope not. That was, something terrible would have gone wrong if we're getting attacked at Pearl Harbor again. Um, so, do, you know, don't worry about sitting these in port. They will defend themselves. And so let's actually look if there's anything we want to peel out of here. Uh, we see the two carriers that just arrived, Yorktown and Saratoga. We see the Lexington and Enterprise, which were already here. We've got a lot of battleships, and that's why I didn't feel too bad keeping that battleship back there at San Diego. We may just kind of let that sit around a little bit. Uh, it's sit around the right word. I, you know, it, it's going to be there. We'll bring it out when we need it, but really battleships are not what we need right now. We do have these destroyer squadrons now that are sitting here, along with a light cruiser uh, destroyer squad. And I've noticed that these are very, very similar, um, even though it says there's CLs in here, which are light cruisers. Well, now this one's actually better, surface and anti-sub. That's Warships 41. This is Warships 40. Okay, well that... You know, explains it, explains it. This still has to repair one more strength point before I'd feel comfortable bringing it out. Uh, three and three, five and five. Okay, um, it's just a matter, do we want to use any oil moving these out here and kind of protecting against subs? I don't think we necessarily need to right now. We've got this one kind of protecting Johnston Island. I just... Uh, in every Pacific War game I play, I get so uh, paranoid about losing Johnston Island because it's really the only halfway decent staging base the Japanese ever have to attack Pearl a second time. Uh, I guess they could do it from Midway, uh, but we're building this unit up. We've got it on priority repairs. It's up to a 5 and 10. Um... And so I feel like that's going to be a nice little fortress. I think that they would have a hard time taking that. Uh, and so at Pearl, we may just leave things be. We're still waiting for transports to get things a moving. Uh, I would like to, I'd love to get this air unit out. It's close support 39. It could do some close in bombing for us. Hopefully this will, well, it does. The game automatically will move this up to close support 1940 and then close support 41, hopefully 42. Let's look at the U.S. and see where we are on close support. It is 42, so it can progress all the way up there. The game will do that automatically. And if we look at close support, 
uh, at 42 where this could be right now we're I think we're back at the what did I say 39 um, when we get out here to 42 it will add a defense an anti-air a tactical and an air combat all to this group uh, and so that's nice on the stats so it progresses you know as I said naturally um, what do we have back here? Well, we brought even more battleships back. Oh, gosh, we just we're swimming in battleships. Uh, now this 14th, uh, we brought back. Oh no, we brought it in to uh, resupply the, uh, and we need to get it back out here actually to help. As a matter of fact, that group, the Colorado, it's not great anti-sub, but we do want it. To, we need something out here to help. Um, are escorts when you sit these down on an escort lane it buffs up your escorts and we've got this at a 10 of 10 so the Japanese can't really do anything to us in this convoy lane but we could potentially blow up a sub if our escorts have a buff and so I'm gonna move him out there now let's make sure okay he's got three supply he only uses one oil right okay so that's fine we'll move that out there and when this destroyer squadron gets back to three supply we'll move it back out we'll move the battleship in all right so we've got all these battleships here just an incredible number of battleships we have this 10th um i think i'm gonna deselect everything reselect back on the 10th and we're just going to have this right outside of san francisco kind of protecting that very important port so you kind of you know i always want to have a ship or I say ship, a group of ships, one group of ships out here, but probably more protecting these very important ports uh, in case we want to, you know, sail something out. We could maybe get a detection level on a sub that's waiting out here or when it's, like I said, when it's on this convoy line, it beefs up our escorts. And so that's a good thing. Um, let's see what else we have. Uh, looks like five battleship groups. Wow, that's a lot of battleships. Now, we sent some of these back from Pearl to be repaired in San Francisco. We just got them out of Pearl uh, because they are low on strength. And should it be re-attacked at some point, I didn't want these to get sunk. So let's go put them back on the U.S. West Coast, and we'll go from there. Uh, up in Seattle, uh, we've got this large infantry corps. Okay, so it's three full divisions. We just can't move them. We don't have transports yet. Uh, we've got the DD squad here. They need to get back up to three supply. Then we'll move them out here to protect uh, the harbor here at Seattle. The Canadians, gosh darn Canadian, they're up there just making maple syrup or something. I don't know what they're up to. Uh, they don't have a whole lot going on. All right, let's look down the map here and just see, you know, is there something maybe we're missing? I'm just going to try to cover the whole map because last time I didn't see those subs till the very end. And I was like, man, I'm really glad I moved those subs. Now, you do have a next operational unit uh, button, so we could be going through that as well. Okay, we're out here at Pearl. Uh, we've got the one uh, destroyer squadron that's just kind of out here uh, looking about, looking about. What's uh, its range? Yeah, well, it's one, right? It's got to be right next to something to attack it. Now, submarines, you cannot directly attack with uh, naval units, with your naval units. Now you can attack them with air units, or if this were a carrier, the air units off of the carrier, uh, but you can't directly attack them with naval units. Um, they can sit in convoy, you know, the subs will sit in convoy lanes and your escorts really have to take care of them. Now, like I said, you can put these on convoy lanes and then it really kind of, you know, beefs up your escorts somewhat. But I do like to have these out here just almost like as an early warning sign if something is out here, if we're going to float ships out. But at this point, we're really not. So I could, I mean, I could put this back in port and at Johnston, you know, this is kind of a defensive in case they try to send some land craft over here or something um, I'm just gonna leave them out here it's not a huge deal right it's one oil use one oil use it's not the end of the world there uh, I don't really think there's anything else we can do at Pearl we've got our air superiority group it's at 20 of 20 it's you know all it's it's all good here uh, it's got its experience has not progressed its effectiveness is back up to 63 these are 1940 interceptors they could go up to 1942 
Uh, hopefully, as turns go on, they will. This is an eight air combat. I believe as they go up to 41 and 42, that maybe will become a nine, which uh, would be great. Uh, the land units, they're probably going to stay here all game, if I'm being honest. Uh, we may move one of them out. Okay, let's go look here a little further. Uh, as you can see, one raindrop in all of these hexes, so a lot of rain. Um, now, this is where my confusion, and it was my confusion, it's just because I'm new to the game. I have read the rule book, but, you know, when you've got uh, six games and, you know, six rule books sloshing around in your head, uh, sometimes things, I can get a little confused. Um, I brought this, to, or uh, no, this is a cruiser squadron, okay, the Salt Lake City. I brought it out here to attack this sub. And then I realized you can't attack a sub unless it's next to a land hex. So if it were in any of these hexes, we could attack it. But the AI has very smartly kept it out of the shallow water. Uh, and now it doesn't have to be represented as shallow water. It just needs to not be next to a land hex. And so we can't directly attack that. Okay, so keep that in mind. Uh, this is sitting out here. How much oil is it using? If it's one, ah, uh, that's okay. I mean, I don't feel too bad. Uh, Suva is so important. Um, maybe I will, though, bring it into port for now. For now. So we're going to put that in there. I have this 4th um, and 5th tactical group that's here. So tactical bombing. They can also do some anti-sub work. It's not you know, great, uh, but they could bomb a sub. Uh, unfortunately, this is out of range. Uh, and we have another complication, which is, this is Kiwi. This is a New Zealand uh, unit. They do not have any oil. Not, not enough, really. Um, now, the oil use is three. You see they now have six in their stockpile. So I guess, I guess if it was out here, maybe we could attack it. What if I came over here? That would take both of its operational points. You see the two there. Uh, so if we flew over to Espirito Santu or uh, down to Nomaya, that would take both operation points. This sub will probably be long gone. Uh, but you can see our range is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can't get there. Uh, and so, unfortunately, we can't attack. We could, you know, fly to a base and try to attack, but this, going this far, is beyond its range. Uh, and so it takes two, the full two operational points. Uh, and so, unfortunately, we can't attack there. Uh, down in New Zealand, we did bring this uh, U.S. destroyer group in here to resupply uh, and get their supply back up, and then we'll move it back out to the convoy lane, probably right here, just north of New Zealand. Uh, we've got two more... Kiwi units, so the Kiwis represent um, Pago Pago. This is just, you know, of course, a gar defensive garrison for now. Uh, no Maya, same deal. Uh, what's happening in Australia? Gosh, how many times have I asked that in my life? Uh, the U.S. Houston squad is out here. It's now got three in supply, so excellent. I think I'll bring this out to No Maya for now uh, and just put it there kind of as a defensive sort of force if something if something uh the japanese bring something out here i mean they're already at rabal let's just move it out here i don't know that it's doing a heck of a lot of good at sydney i would like to put some destroyer like a destroyer there a destroyer group there uh but we don't have enough right now we're eventually hopefully going to have enough but we don't right now uh, melbourne we got a division we've got the headquarters we've got a uh, garrison at uh, Sydney, Brisbane, we, you know, this is a defensive garrison. We'll probably always have those there. Uh, Carnes, I don't know. I mean, we could put this on a garrison status, but I feel like it's a little close to Moresby. I would love to get something over to Milton Bay or something else over to Moresby. But as you see, the Australians have no oil. Oh, I was confusing New Zealand uh, with Australia for the oil amount. Um, we are going to be sending, hopefully, a lot of oil to Australia, both from the UK and the US this turn, so they can at least get these planes maybe over to Port Moresby. Uh, if we look at them, um, so we have the Canberra here, which is a cruiser squadron. We may go put that in Moresby, maybe. I don't want it to get bombed, so we may leave it here. Uh, but since the Japanese, we probably would be in bombing range at Moresby. But here we have a tactical bombing group. 
they're good for some, you know, they've got a little anti-sub, they're a little, they're okay, they're not even okay. They've got a little naval air, uh, air combat and tactical bombing, fairly good. I wouldn't mind putting these at Moresby. Now, they would get chewed up if these are Japanese fighters, and we don't really know. It's the first air division. Now, I'm not sure, I should go look, but on the Japanese counter, I don't know if, well, I do. There is a differentiation. These look like fighters, right? On the Philippines, but that could just be the general stock one. Um, on the Philippines, he says, as he was having a hard time finding the Philippines, we did see a unit up here, a bombing unit that looked like dive bombers. And that's interesting. So we'll have to go look and see... You know, is there a differentiation? Can I tell that these are fighters? Or is just this the general representation? It's not the general. No, it can't be, right? Because those are the airfields. So if we see an airfield let's uh, like this, you know that there's an air unit there. You just don't know what type. Um, and so I, I do believe this are these are fighters. I mean, they look like fighters. I will go confirm that. Uh, just so we know that at some point. Uh, we've got two Japanese task forces of some sort uh, coming down here to Rabaul now that they've taken it, and they've got the 72nd Division. Okay, so they're division strong out here. We have a division at Moresby that we've got on priority repairs, trying to get this sucker up to 10 if we can. Moresby is a jungle hex, uh, so we do get defensive bonuses here um that could come in very helpful <laughs> let's say that if the japanese come here in any force we have no way of getting units up there as of right now uh, but first of all we need oil to get this tactical group up in the air and for now actually i will put that on uh kind of the mission only which is sort of a stand down i would have to give it a specific mission when it's on a uh, full support it will automatically go out and bomb something if a unit of ours needs tactical support okay uh moresby okay that's fine now we had these units that are moving across the desert uh looks like they uh well they've run out of oil they don't have any oil use so that shouldn't matter. Uh, I think I already moved them earlier in the turn. Uh, we do have an air superiority. Oh, excellent, excellent. Um, the Dutch have a lot of oil. This has another, what's the range? Eight? Interesting. Okay, if we can rail this, this is air superiority. That's what we need, really. This is a great group. 2020 on the strength. Air combat eight. Maybe I put that over in Moresby, and I take this bombing group, uh, the tactical bombing group, and put that in Darwin. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll put them on rail mode next time, bring them to Townsville or, or Carnes, and then fly them over to Port Moresby to protect against this Japanese unit. I think that's exactly what we'll do. Uh, now, I could rail this to Darwin or almost almost all the way to Darwin um, looks like the rail goes all the way in there okay well that you know that's unlike some other games because hmm, do I dare do did I rail move oh yeah okay okay I was wrong the rail only goes out here I guess I was right and wrong. Uh, the rail, I, I didn't realize I was on actual fly mode here. Uh, the rail only goes here. We'll move these guys when we get that air superiority group over here uh, for the Dutch. Uh, okay, those units will keep moving. One will go to Darwin. One will go to Darby or Port Hedland. Uh, let's get off of... Let's get off of rail. Okay, let's just click there. Okay, <laughs> Perth, we've got a division there as well we should. Let's get up here by the Banda Sea. So we're moving northwest from uh, Port Moresby. Uh, this unit finally got, uh, you know, into active status. Its strength is only 5 of 10. We're trying to uh, get it. Uh, beefed up a little bit. The Japanese are attacking. It's the last thing the Dutch have. Uh, once this is gone, forget about it. 
Uh, do the Dutch, yeah, they don't have any transport. So even if we wanted to get this unit out of here, we have no way of doing it. Now we do have this unit coming down from uh, what was in Madan. We're going to come try to protect Palembang. I would like this to be on active status, but that's going to get rid of all of our movement this time. Oh, they don't have enough production to do it, to to flip it back here, the Dutch don't. So we're just going to have to keep moving this garrison down here slowly but surely. Uh, and that's it. He only had that one operation point. Um, it looks like they have completely destroyed Singapore. Uh, I said, not the whole town, my goodness. No. Uh, they have taken, or they will take Singapore. They destroyed our unit here in Singapore. Uh, they are also into Sarawak uh, in the northern part of Greater Borneo. They will be taking all of this oil, uh, which stinks. Uh, you know, that's what the Japanese need. That's why they started this little adventure just, you know, at the start. That's what, That was the beginning. They needed that uh, precious black stuff. Now, we have this unit up at Kota Baru. I guess we could go try to stack this unit with it. Uh, they have... Uh, you know, the Japanese have a headquarters up here. They probably have other units that we just can't see or don't have detection on. But we'll try to move this up here by Kota Baru. Uh, these are Indian troops. They're completely trapped. The Indian uh, units do not, they don't have transports either. Now, this is completely out of supply. Kota Baru has nothing. We're completely cut off from the outside world. So these will lose pretty much all effectiveness, I think. Uh, over the next few turns. Now, as we move up here, you see there was attacking going on. Um, we need to get this unit into active status if we can. Now, does India have enough production to do it? Set to active? No, they do not. Uh, we really need to get that done. Now, luckily, we've got these units uh, that you know are helping protect here, but they're not that strong. And this has now only got a strength of 7 of 10 and 7 of 10. This unit can move up here. Okay, I've got more coming. So let's, um, let's do that. Now next time we have got to prioritize turning this to active. Right now it's only at half effectiveness. Well, effectiveness isn't the right word to use because that's an actual term of the game. Uh, and it's actually, you know, it's effectiveness is 99%. But... It's uh, combat strength and its movement goes in half when you've got it in garrison mode. So we need to get that off garrison. I don't think we can move anybody else here. We moved a lot of this uh, earlier in the turn. We do have this air superiority group that we're trying to build up and we're trying to get down. Well, I said down into Rangoon, but I, I was worried Rangoon might get taken. And so we've just got them here. Now we could do an airstrike. That's something we haven't done yet. If I right clicked here, we could airstrike because that is within our sixth range and we still have an operation point yet. But I'm going to leave these guys up in quote unquote full support. And so if the Japanese try to bomb anything here, we're going to try to assert our air superiority. So we'll just leave that as is. Uh, I've, I've got it here because I want to keep Rangoon in um, range, right? And so its range is six. I've got it one, two, three, four, five away. Uh, that works. I'll move this unit in here next time. That all looks fine. I don't really think there's too much else we can do. They have to come in here and try it. Now see, we could attack. And that's how you do it. You right click there. We could attack. We could also um, if we held down control, we can pick other units to help with the attack if they've got operation points, but they don't. This one doesn't. It's the only one contiguous to it. Or if you hit shift and you hover over this, the game will automatically uh, highlight every one of your units that surrounds this or touches it. Um, China. Have we moved China yet this turn? I believe we have. I'm looking at uh, operational points. And it looks like, no, I, I guess we haven't. My bad, my bad. We have not moved China yet. So let's continue our retreat here in the mountains. Uh, or do we? Actually, they've got a cavalry group here. Uh, 
and we are already entrenched at a level one, they will have a very hard time moving through this bad terrain. And then as you see, we get up here in the snow. Now let's put supply on though. We may want to get back someplace where we've got, we're a little bit better in supply uh, with both of these units. Um, now you see there's a clear hex there. I kind of want to put them like here, right here on this road. Uh, as a matter of fact, let, let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to keep moving back, and I think I'll put them in these two hexes maybe. Then they can't really go around us this way unless they jump a river into bad supply. So I'm just going to keep moving these uh, red Chinese units back. Now, this has got a, a, a five for its range. One, two, three, four. It can actually go back. One, two, three, four. Five. Nope, that's it. Okay, but we'll put this in Lan Chow uh, and just have this set up as the red Chinese capital. Now, we've got this unit out here. It doesn't look like it's really protecting against much. Uh, let's back that up behind the river. I keep going back and forth whether it'll keep this town or not. Um, this is Yan'an. It's a main supply source. It... I keep moving it back and forth like that. <laughs> We're going to keep that now because it is a main supply source. I don't want the Japanese to get that. Uh, one, two, three, four. Is that it? Yeah, it's in command. You can see the little ribbon when they're in command. And this goes out to five. It automatically attaches to them. Um, this is a very strong unit that looks like it's going to try to come down this way. Now, we have been bringing units kind of north and east uh we cannot lose chungking chungking is just way too important to us uh so we've got to be very cognizant of that this is not built an entrenchment level i think it got knocked back uh so we're just going to have to leave it there for now but i think we'll also be retreating this unit back um is that true yeah, I think that's true. We can retreat both of these back to try to protect Chung King here. Now, everybody's got bad, everybody Chung King tonight. Uh, this has got really bad supply out here. We may eventually have to just come back here, put the headquarters here, and set up a good, a good supply zone. Uh, I don't think the Japanese would have good supply out here either. So in China, you know, again, we're running a defensive operation, as you will in China. We've moved this infantry unit up here to try to help uh, as these Japanese units come towards Chongqing. We do have this Chinese unit trapped and isolated. It would be really nice. This is a full army. It would be awesome to uh, decimate this. This was the second turn it didn't have supply. Generally speaking, infantry can only go three turns before they really start being hurt. And so hopefully we can keep this surrounded. Um, you may say, what is this? That's a railroad thing uh, off the top of my head. I just can't remember. I think it's got to do with they cut the railroad. So it would have to be repaired. Uh, we've got these units completely surrounding it. I don't want to change that. We've got this unit up here in Chenzu. Uh, we want to keep that uh, right there. Uh, we kind of got a little blocking force in case the you know Japanese get some kind of idea about coming up here. We ran down here and took uh, Zhang Zhang. Why not? They were just giving it to us. They're sitting in Canton and Hong Kong. Uh, okay, we'll just take, you know, we'll take some more territory. Now, we could move this guy up here too. For now, I'm going to leave him right there. I've got this unit on a city. I've got that unit in a city. Uh, we, You? Me? No, you. You? Me? I don't know. Who's on first? Uh, we're behind the river there. Okay. It's not great supply situation. Um, is there anything here? Yeah, it's you. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll stop that joke. It's ridiculous. Uh, Kunming. We always, always really have to protect Kunming. It's just way too important. We've got the Burma Road coming up here, dropping off production and supply. If the Japanese get on this railroad or on this road that goes to Kunming, that is the Burma Road. Okay. And so if you hear the Burma Road, that is it. Uh, we moved all these. Um, 
Calcutta. Okay, we've got the UK 11th in here getting some supply. We've got a headquarters unit for the ABDA com. Uh, it's British. It's Well, it's not British. It, it was the whole combined command for the Americans, Australians, British, and Dutch. Uh, and so it's sitting here. It really should go down to Australia probably, and then we'll bring it back up when we reattack uh, Java. Um, not a whole lot uh, we have to worry about here in India. Uh, eventually, could we move some of these out? Probably. We already split up the units we can in India uh, and, and moved them down. Afghanistan is impassable. Uh, still to this day, Afghanistan is impassable. Uh, Colombo, we've got an infantry division in there. It's really not very strong, uh, but it'll build over time. And then we've got the USS Pike, the submarine. It now has full supply. Excellent. It's got eight days worth because it is a long range sub. Long range sub 40 gets uh, eight supply. It does use an oil, um, but we're going to go set this down. So let's get off the Revenge and get off the Hermes and take the Pike. Um, where do we want to put it? Well, here is interesting. There's, we've got a lot of options here. I really, I think, would like the pike to be out in this area, like maybe here, uh, and really mess with Japanese shipping. Now, let's make sure, okay, so when we move the pike out, how far can we go? There we go. Okay. Uh, we can go this far. So let's go there. So the pike is out, and now let's turn it to... A uh, raider mode. Now, what is raider mode? We talk. Oh, I can't do it this turn. Uh, let's undo this. Can I put it on raider mode when it's in port? Is that how I have to do it? Hold on. Raider mode. Yeah, I can. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um. Oh, you know what though? Uh, let's you know click. Well, I guess these all, it doesn't really matter if these get put in raider mode, uh, but we're only going to move the pike out. Uh, let's move the pike there. You can see it's in raider mode. What is raider mode? And, you know, this is my, I, I had a little question about all of this. What is raider mode exactly? It means that they're much less likely to be detected. The detection level goes down one in this hex. And so the Japanese have a hard time finding it. It cannot well, this is true always of submarines. It cannot be attacked by a surface vessel, uh, but even the escorts, and this is just kind of uh, an operation of the game, they have a harder time finding it. This is really to try to attack convoys. That's all it's trying to do. It's trying not to be detected. If you have it in fleet mode, so if I flip this over to fleet mode, it really will attack surface ships. That's what you're trying to do with it. Uh, in this mode, we're trying to disrupt convoys. Okay, that's the main difference. Now, is that considered contiguous to land? I don't think it should be, but I'm, I'm worried enough about it that I'm going to go back here just to make sure because I'm not exactly what's, con you know, like there is land. This is a beach hex here and you can't be next to a land hex. And I just don't want to take that chance until I know the operations of the game uh, for certain. See like this, that's got a little land in it. Would this be considered contiguous to a land hex? That's a question for all of you that have played uh, the original war plan. Uh, I would like to know that though. Okay, so this time then, I'm just going to bring it here. We won't put it in a convoy lane yet. Uh, is that true? It must not be, right? This couldn't be considered contiguous to land. I'll have to go, I'll have to go read about that though. I just want to make sure. So let's go there for this time. It's definitely not now. And uh, we'll go put it up here in these sea lanes to really mess with the Japanese shipping. So we've got that out of there. Um, these guys, the Revenge and the Hermes, we'll put them back on fleet. Uh, we have a destroyer, or no, a cruiser squadron out here uh, helping. Now this is the group, not that group, nope. This is the group that I was like, what the heck, man? Um, I brought the Repulse Prince of Wales and DeRoyter out here on accident. 
do they have their operate? They do have operation points. Okay, perfect. We're going to go put those back in Colombo. Um, I didn't mean to move them out. I moved them out on accident. So let's go put those in Colombo so they're not, you know, chewing up oil resources. So they're back in here. Uh, revenge. Yeah, okay. Deselect all. There we go. So now we've got the Prince of Wales, the Deroiter, which is a Dutch uh, flotilla. Uh, we've got the Repulse Squadron in here, the Revenge Squadron, and the Hermes Light Carrier Squadron. So, okay, they've got a nice little force there at Colombo. Uh, these units I don't think really need to move. They've, they're down to one supply. We'll bring that in next time. We'll bring this one in next time. I actually would like to kind of uh, space those. So you know what? Actually, let's bring this one in this time, and then we'll bring this one in next time. Okay, and then we'll just kind of rotate those as you will. Uh, let's go look at these American subs. Okay, they've already moved. We already went and looked. Well, this one didn't, uh, but that's fine. I like right where it's sitting, the skipjack. I do believe we got some shots out last time uh, by the grayling on some convoys and escorts. The U.S. subs are not very good at this point. So, okay, not a whole lot we can do about that. Uh, South Luzon Infantry, it's dug in at a two level. I kind of want to keep it that way, but I also got to get back here. Do I? I don't know. We've got this division in Manila. It's not a very strong one, um, but neither is this. Uh, let's keep them dug in. Let's keep them as they are. Now, I do believe I could move this and potentially try to cut off the Japanese a little bit. I don't want to give up Lingayan. Um, let's do that. Let's try to cut off this Japanese force and maybe see if we can keep it from getting any supply here and whittle it down a little bit. I guess along those lines... Nah, I'm going to leave him right there. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh, these are the planes that we try. You know, we had to move uh, to get them out of Manila. So now we're just going to keep skipping them here if we can. There we go. Uh, we can go to Sarong this time. We can skip that far. Ambon, Dili. Oh, can it get? Can it get all? The, oh, it can get all the way to Dili. Dili, Dili. Uh, Ten. Okay, let's take it to Dili. There we go. And we're going to bring this into Darwin as well. Uh, that is another tactical group. So this, uh, the one tactical group that we have here, maybe we can put that out at Moresby with uh, this Dutch fighter group and then just leave these uh, American tactical bombers here at Darwin. Um, DeVoe, we've got this unit down here. We've got this unit that's still in very good supply. I don't really know why we would be here. Is there a town there? Batuan, okay. We could come over here to Demonquilas Bay. Wow, that sounds nice. Uh, Aruba, Jamaica. We could come up. No, nope, we can't get across. Oh, can we? No, I guess we. maybe we can only move one. Uh, we could move this right down here. Do I want to do that? No, let's stay in that town. That's fine. That's all fine. You get a little bump from uh, defending from an urban area. So let's do that. Okay, the one thing I did want to go see in the reports, I just want to make sure that... Uh, so advancement, effectiveness, type. Um, I did want to just make sure we've moved all of our submarines this time. So we, we saw the skipjack and the grayling, the pike, okay, that's that one that we moved that we had got resupplied, okay, so that's the pike, the swordfish, okay, oh, okay, so this is sitting out here in Japanese uh, shipping lanes as well, just south of the home islands, I like that, um... That was the swordfish, right? Yep, that's the swordfish. Okay, we moved them all. Uh, excellent. Let's go ahead and resolve this turn. Why not? All right. Actually, no. <laughs> Let's go look at our build queue. Let's just make sure. Okay, so the Brits, the UK has 77 stockpile. Um, you know, that almost gets us another division, if that's what we wanted. We could also go over here to support, 
and get some more, you know, get another escort if we wanted to. Um, do we do this? It's 210 build days. That's a long time. Gosh, darn it. That seems like a lot. Uh, they have no shipyards. Actually, we couldn't do that. Uh, the Brits right now, their shipyards going nuts. Uh, so all 340 in capacity is being used. We have none. Okay, so there's not a whole lot we can do there with the Brits. Could we do some Air Force stuff? No, these are very expensive, the air groups, which they should be. They should be, right? Um, let's look at the Amer... So I think I'm just going to bank that with the Brits. They're sending out everything they can uh, through the convoy system. And so you see here, zero and zero. There's nothing left. They've already got two trades that are going on. They've got one going... No, they've got three. They've got India, New Zealand... Australia, where they're sending production and oil. You see here, this uh, supply, this is automatic. And you see this is red. Uh, Caviang must be, uh, well, let's just go there. Let's see what's going on. Uh, this is Caviang. It's completely isolated because of the Japanese. I'm actually surprised they haven't taken that yet. They probably will, like this turn or next turn. Um, so that's, that's nice that it shows you that in red. But we have these three agreements. They can't send out anymore. I think I'm just going to bank. Uh, the U.S. could send out a lot more production here to someone. Um, okay. What are they already sending? They're sending 38 and 5. But they couldn't. Actually, they can't. That's right. They've got no more merchant marines left. Now, the Brits have merchant marines, but have shipped all the production and oil they can. The U.S. does not have merchant marines. Uh, and, you know, so they're sitting here with 56 more that they could send, which means maybe we need to build some more merchant marines. Uh, I think maybe we did that this turn. Sometimes I forget. I flip back in games. So let's go look at the U.S. build queue. Yeah, we did. That, and that will be showing up June 5th. Uh, it's only 10, right? Uh, but, you know, they cost like 100 production points. Probably just going to leave that as. Let's look at the U.S. build queue. It's got a 188 stockpile. It's adding a bunch every turn. Uh, we've got transports on the way. They're supposed to be coming. We could build something else here. We could build another uh, long-range sub. Those cost 88 or 96 if we pop them up to the 1941 model. Um, shipyard 66. Yep, we got our shipyard capacity back. So let's go ahead and do one more long-range submarine. This will be the Cutlass Submarine Squadron. Uh, so I'm, I'm creating a lot of submarines, and that's because I'm going to do everything I can to disrupt those Japanese convoys. So now submarine group is built. And I also wanted to look at the destroyer groups. Those are quite a bit more expensive. Uh, okay, I don't think we'll do that. And I think when we come back next time, we should have a, you know, shoot, I don't know, almost 300. I'm going to start looking at doing some more air superiority groups. Uh, that's really what I want to get next. Okay, uh, advancements, I think we're fine here. Uh, there's no reason to change anything with advancements. Nobody has any research centers that are idle. I've got them set the way I want. Uh, so let's back up. <laughs> Man, had a hard time there. Let's back up. Let's run the turn. And again, if you're tuning in for the first time and you're saying, oh my gosh, these turn times are way too slow for me, I slowed this down to the slowest level. If you've got it on the fastest level, they take about 30 seconds. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I can't play this game uh, because I just, you know, it's like nails on a chalkboard watching this thing move. I like to do this because we're learning the game. So I want to see as much as I can. Uh, but once you get the game and you understand the game, the, you can resolve the AI or the AI will resolve its turn in like, we, we did it a test on uh, turn one. It took like 30 seconds. As I mentioned a few times, I really like the countdown here. We've now clicked over to January 18th for the Japanese turn. You can see our moves. Now it's showing where we moved this turn. 
uh, as like the enemy, quote unquote, enemy action. That's just because it's the Japanese turn, of course. Um, they should be marching. The Japanese will be marching into Singapore. Eventually. Now we see them uh, eventually probably attacking even more in China. They're always on the offensive here. For the most part, for the most part, we're, we're, our hope is to make this a stalemate. Now, hopefully that isolated unit, we can destroy that. A full Japanese army, that would be awesome. It would be cool if we could hang on to Rangoon. <laughs> is, that, is that a good army technical term? Cool? That would be very cool if we could hold on to that. Um... All right, they're going to have a hard time taking the red, the red Chinese uh, area up there because it's just terrible terrain. It's bad supply for them. There aren't good supply lines. Now they're coming across Java to come try to get Batavia. We're trying to build that up. We've got that on priority uh, reinforcement there. And so hopefully, yeah, this is down to a two and two, it looks like. We may just go ahead and attack that this time. We'll see. Surprised they haven't attacked harder there underneath Changsha to try to relieve that unit. Oh, as you see, we're going to have to start retreating out of here. Uh, I don't want this unit to get isolated, so we'll have to come back this way. Okay. They attacked there. It was a zero and zero. This is the amount of points the attack or strength the attacker lost. That's how many we lost, but we actually shattered there. And so uh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> did I need to tell you that? Uh, our unit shattered. That's not good. It just went away. We're going to try to isolate that unit. If they don't move units up behind, uh, they did. Okay, good job, AI. I was going to say, if they don't move anything there, we're going to try to move to isolate that. Uh, too late for that. And now they've got a, a 12 combat effectiveness coming after Batavia. I very much doubt we've built up enough to uh, hold that attack off, that's for sure. All right. Back into China. As we go on here, I'll speed these turns up. We don't have to sit here and, you know, watch it to this level. I may just, you know, as a matter of fact, bump up the speed a little bit for next time. I mean, this is probably a little slow. But again, you know, I, I like I like watching the game. I know some of you don't. Uh, you, or you don't like this, you know, watching this all play out. Well, we're getting really isolated down here in Rangoon. Looks like the Japanese may be able to take that. I would like to get this unit in here. Um, and I would like to be able to protect this oil potentially uh, with this unit. But we're going to have to turn this to active. we got to get these active. Uh, some of those I brought down here, they weren't active and they got really uh, you know, blasted away. Now it's going to move this back here and probably move its stronger unit there. We will turn this to active this time. So if we can, I mean, we got to have enough production in India to uh, draw off of it. The way this works is you put it on garrison. It sends back 25% of the stuff it would normally use. But when you turn it active, it draws it all back down. So long term, it's not, you know, it's not necessarily an advantage to do that. And if I had to go back, if I understood the game a little better right at the start, probably some of these I just I wouldn't even yeah, some of them started on garrison, uh, but a lot of them that I did put on garrison, I probably wouldn't. I wouldn't do that again. All right, we're up to events, and so the Japanese have pretty much done their turn here. Okay, allies deliver resources to China via the Burma Road. Okay, well, it was open. Uh, it's no longer open. Uh, they have just severed that line. 
which is too bad. Convoy attack versus the Japanese, uh, a Japanese route at 50-51. Skipjack uh, hit the, con you know, tried to hit convoys. Uh, it got zero and zero, okay? Uh, the Grayling, same thing, zero and zero. So those American torpedoes aren't working out so well. Swordfish attacked the East China lane uh, with one group, zero and zero. Well, gosh darn it, come on. We need these subs to do a little better than that. Uh, our China's 18th Army shattered. India's 13th Brigade shattered. India's 14th Division shattered. Fleet has no supplies, so we'll have to go look at that. 28th, okay, no supply source here. We'll see that when we click on these over here. It'll take us directly to it. Um, now, what the heck? So now... <clears throat> The Japanese attack our convoy lane and get one merchant marine and one escort. Gosh darn it. <laughs> so it was, a, it was on the India route. We'll have to go look at that. That's where this took place, on the India route. Now, we're a little under strength on the India route. We've talked about that. I, I You know, I, it is what it is. What can we do? All right. Let's go look around the map just quickly, and then we'll call it an episode for this time. And when we come back... Next time, we'll get going again. Um, so Kunming, okay, we're in big trouble here. Can we flip this this time? Yes, okay, well, that's good. So we got this over to active status. It's now 8 of 10 in strength, so it may be able to withstand a little bit. Uh, this is already on active status, the Indian 20th. I'm actually going to have this just come protect this oil. And then I'm going to have this one come down here and get behind this river uh, and say, okay, you know, I mean, we keep throwing stuff at us. We're going to try our best to hold on. One, two, three, four, five. I can't move this air group any further. Uh, this is where they're going to have to be if they're going to help Rangoon at all. Is that true, though? One, two, three, four, five. Ah, too bad. Port Blair almost gives us a Rangoon save. That would have been nice. Uh, the headquarters. What are we going to do with the headquarters? It needs to be within five. I would like to get headquarters support to this. So two, three, four, five. It's got to go right there. And then uh, let's undo that, actually. Hold on. It, okay, it jumped us back up, but it did move it back. That's what I wanted. Uh, let's move this unit here. Actually, the headquarters needs to be there, really. But I don't dare have a headquarters like right there, I don't think. How about right there, though? Is that okay? And then next time I'll move this here. And if I click on that, yeah, now this is in command. It'll get those bonuses and bumps. Uh, that works. I think that works. They can move here. We've got a zone of control here. I don't think they can move directly through here. Now, our headquarters does have defense. It's defensive. It's not like it's helpless. It's, as a matter of fact, got a two combat effect effectiveness. These only have ones. So it's not as if it's helpless. Um, right. Okay. I, I think that works. Uh, we've got some units we need to get out of here, some of these units. Uh, let's look at our build queue, see how we're doing. Uh, the UK is up to a 121 stockpile, and they've got uh, 68 oil. So that's good. That's good. We'll try to get more of those merchant marines at work. Um, the US, yeah, the, the oil stockpile is only going up by 8 each time. We're sending out 7, but it's only going up by 8. That's not great. Uh, India. Does it have enough production to build something else? No. As a matter of fact, <laughs> we're, we're uh, yeah, upkeep's 28. We've only got a stockpile of 14. We've got a lot going into reinforcements and upgrades. Uh, we could be in a little trouble up here if the Japanese really start trying to break through here because we used a lot of our units to run down here to Rangoon, but we had a couple get shattered. Uh, so that's not great. Now, can we see where in this Indian Ocean? Um, no, we don't, we don't have any detection level on that sub that was out here in the Indian Ocean convoy lane. Uh, okay, we'll have to deal with that. What else are we dealing with? They didn't do a whole lot. Now, we cut that off. They didn't try to attack Manila, which I thought was kind of interesting. 
Yeah, I wanted to make sure that was active. This is These are all active, I believe. Yep, they're all active, so that's good. Um, they haven't landed out here at Davao yet, or on Mindanao. This is the small, you know, the most southern island of the Philippines is Mindanao. Uh, they still haven't come after Bali, Papa, and Tarakan. Boy, that'd be one of the first places I go there and uh, Palembang. I mean, that's a 30 oil that uh, that's coming right there. As a matter of fact, let's keep this guy moving down here as far as he can go. Um, okay, here's this unit. I'm going to go read the rule book to see what is actually considered next to a land hex. Does that count? Or does it have to be around the whole land? You know, does it have to be in the whole land hex? That would seem a little odd. Uh, but I think if we had it here, it would open us up to uh, potentially getting attacked because we would be within one of a land hex. I just want to make sure. I could just go ahead and put this here. That maybe is the better idea anyway. Why don't I just do that? I'll just put that there. That's the USS Pike Squadron. Um, so now we've got three U.S. sub squadrons sitting here, and we've got one up here on... Uh, did that get blown away? Did we lose a sub? Uh, what? Let's go to the combat log. Last turn. Land combat, okay. Carrier strike. Well, it wasn't that one. We did take some losses here, though. We got to get the grayling out of here. Uh, so they did have detection on the grayling. That we probably should have moved that. So these are there's carriers in here somewhere. Carrier strike there. Convoy attack. Oh, their escorts and convoys sunk one of our sub squads. Wow. Okay. So things work. Um, we also had a convoy attack on the Grayling and down here. So, I mean, we're fighting it out with them there. How's the Grayling looking? It's probably only got one. Yeah, it's only got one left. We got to get that the heck out of here. Uh, aye, aye. Okay. Do we bring it down this way and around? I think we do. So that's one of its points. And then how far can it go elsewhere? Elsewhere, Let's put it in it, Darwin. Now, it can't get repaired there, but I don't want this thing to get hit again. I'm going to put it in at Darwin for this turn, and then we'll sail it around to Sydney. Uh, I guess I could have gone out to Colombo, too. But uh, we'll take that. As a matter of fact, that's probably the better idea. That's, uh, wow, okay. So we're going to, eh, I can't put it into port anywhere out here, though. I, I wanted to put it into port. I don't want it to get hit again. Let's put it in at Darwin uh, for now. Wow, so they su they sunk one of our sub squads, uh, the, the one that was off the home islands here, and they really hurt the Grayling. Uh, so what is this looking at? Okay, Skipjack's still three of three. Uh, Pike is only two of three. So that did take a hit. Hmm. I thought that that was built up to three of three. I could be wrong. Now I kind of want to get it the heck out of here and, and sail it all the way back. I know that that's like, what a waste. Uh, but I don't want that another one to get sunk. Well, we'll leave it here for this turn. Famous last words. Uh, the skipjack is fine, though. But it's only got one day of supply. Hmm. Well, that's okay. We'll move it out next time. That's fine. All right. With that said, we're going to call this an episode. I'm going to have uh, several episodes up today. Keep playing this game in anticipation of the launch of War Plan Pacific tomorrow. Tomorrow. To okay. I will not sing Annie to you. Uh, wow. That got weird. Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for dropping by. This has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Have a good one, guys. I'll talk to you next time.